Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to Unparalleled Universe for another action figure review. And today we're taking a look at the brand new Star Wars Black Series Mandalorian figures. And not only are we going to review these two figures, we're also going to take an in-depth look at the differences between the two of them. Because for some reason Hasbro decided to put out three different versions of the Mandalorian on Force Friday. And what they are is the first edition version and the carbonized version. And then the third one is the one that comes in the black box. I'm not even sure what they're calling it, but I think that that one is going to be the standard standard release. It's probably going to be the one that's the easiest to find. So I'm really happy that I was able to get my hands on these two. Thanks to my wife because I was at work. I couldn't get out to Target right away, but she hit up the local Target and found these two and picked them up for me. So awesome stuff from my better half there. But anyways, let's get into it here. So as far as I could tell, the first edition version and the version that comes in the black box seem to be the exact same figure on the inside. The only thing that's different is the box. But for the carbonized version, the figure is actually different. It has a different paint job and it seems to be that that's pretty much it It just has a different paint job, but it's pretty significant It looks really different when you have them next to each other side by side as you could tell right here But um, I will be opening both of them so that we could take a really close look at them But let's look at the boxes here first off. I really like this white box for the Star Wars black series I think it looks really cool Especially with the red in the background there behind the figure and then you have some really cool artwork right up here and then on the side of the box, it just read like all the Black Series figures. And then on the on the back, we have a very vague character description about the Mandalorian. Some more artwork on this side is just white. And then for the, the carbonized version, you can see that it's really reflective. It does look cool. It's a little bit harder to see the artwork here, but it still looks really nice. On the side, we have some more like reflective, uh, you know, silver work going on here. On the back, we have the same description, same artwork. It's just pretty much all metallic looking. And it looks really cool, but I do wish that the background color was different. I think it would have looked better if it was black or something else, not just like that weird uh, gray color. And one thing that should be noted about these figures is that the carbonized version, for some reason, is actually more expensive than the first edition version because this one was only $19.99 and the carbonized version was $24.99. So what's up with that? That kind of sucks. But anyways, I think that's enough about the boxes. Let's go ahead and open these figures up and take a look. Okay, so now we have both figures out of their boxes, and damn, I'm really impressed with these figures. It's been quite a while since I purchased a Star Wars Black Series figure, and I, I didn't realize how far Hasbro has come with the line. There's a lot of new stuff on this figure that I didn't realize that they were doing for Star Wars Black Series. Maybe maybe this might be the first time they've implemented some of these things that I'm talking about, but yeah, I'm, I'm really Really impressed with both of these figures and man they're, they're really really nice but since they both share the same sculpt we're just going to use the first edition version as our example for the sculpt so let's go ahead and get into it here just check out all the details on this guy he's definitely boba fett influenced obviously you have the t helmet here that looks nice and this one does kind of have a metallic look it's not as metallic as the other one it's a uh, kind of a darker gunmetal gray and then you have like a bunch of um, scuffs and just different colors. Maybe it's like rust or something. But that looks really cool on the helmet. I like that a lot. Very cool. And then here you have the the uh, little harness thing that has like the bullets or whatever you want to call them. And these things are sculpted nicely and I like that there's some paint details on there it's pretty much brown but at least the buckles and stuff like that are silver the bullets are silver then you have his belt buckle here painted silver you have some pouches some things going on um, I, I went ahead and put his accessories on him because he doesn't come with much he just has the two weapons and this is one thing I really dislike about this figure the gun this gun here which is really cool it's this big long like rifle type of thing I don't know but um, it pegs into his back but for some reason, it just won't go in very good. And it has this like super long peg. You would think that it would stick in there and stay, but it doesn't. It feels like it only goes that far in. And it goes through the strap and then into his back. I guess you could maybe try to bypass the strap and you might be able to get it in there a little bit deeper. But yeah, that's as far as I could get it. And then I do like how the little poncho cape thing kind of hangs out under it. And this thing is very nice too, very well detailed. I think I would have preferred, you know, soft goods, but still, I think it looks pretty cool. The sculpting on it is nice. And then, yeah, look at this guy, man. He looks really good. Got some stuff going on there. Let me go ahead and move this before it drives me crazy. The lower legs, you have some pouches. Some stuff going on over here. You got some more, like, bullets. And yeah, I'm really excited about this show. That, that trailer that was released looked badass, man. I think this is going to be a really cool show. 
And hopefully, you know, there's been times in the past where Hasbro releases Star Wars characters before we know too much about the characters, and then they're really disappointing in the movie, like Captain Phasma or whatever. And um, I really hope that's not the case with Mandalorian. He looks so badass. I really hope that uh, he delivers in the show. But yeah, I really like this figure a lot. The sculpting work on it is really nice. You got some, like, uh, battle damage on the armor here. Check this out. This all looks good. Got some more battle damage. Not much paint detail like in here. It's just kind of plastic looking, but still looks, you know, it's fine. Doesn't look horrible or anything. You have this piece here. A little guard for his, like, thigh area. And you have the gun holster, which you could definitely use. Put his little pistol deal in there. Let's check it out here. There we go, and it comes out the bottom there. That looks great. Let's see what we have going on in the back. Not too much. Like I said, there's that little hole so you could peg the bigger gun into there. Cut the shoulder pads. But yeah, it's a really good looking figure, man. I like this one a lot. And I'll be honest with you, when I looked at the two figures in the packaging, I was fully expecting to like this paint job on this figure more than the um, carbonized shiny one. But once I took the carbonized one out of the box, I like fell in love with it, man. This thing is badass. Check it out. I like that paint job a lot. Let's take a quick look at this and then we'll compare them. But yeah, look at that. I was kind of iffy on the <laughs> the shiny clothes, you know, because that's not very realistic. But, um, you know, it still looks fine overall. I, I like that shiny look a lot. And I'm having the same problem here with this gun. It doesn't peg in all the way. So that's really frustrating. But I'll go ahead and put that down and we'll take a look at the accessories in a second here. But yeah, look at this thing. It looks really good. In some areas, the colors kind of blend in more than they do on the other version, like right here, you know. But in, in other areas, you know, things kind of stand out like the knee pad here. But yeah, let's go ahead and, and compare them here. So as you can see, they're significantly different. So if it turns out this show is awesome and you, and you love this character, you might have to pick up both of these. So as for the differences, starting off with the helmet, as you can see, the helmet on the carbonized version is silver and the one on... The first edition is more gunmetal. And the poncho too has like a reflective look on the carbonized version. Not so much on the first edition version. And the armor pieces definitely look more bronze on the carbonized version. And as you can see, some of the colors, there's a better contrast of colors on this version. As you can see, the chest plate is like a darker brown and then this is a lighter brown. But on this one here, it kind of, I mean, the, the colors don't look so different from each other because they're both kind of metallic. Everywhere in the torso area kind of blends in a little bit. Over here, some of the things kind of stand out. And um, same thing here, like on the hip area, you see how this like armor piece kind of just blends in with the pants and then not so much over here. But then like on the kneecap, this kneecap I feel like stands out way more than this one. This one definitely has like a plastic type of look to it. And this one has a, like a nice metallic look. Same thing over here. Check out these two knee things. I don't know what you'd call them. But I like this one a lot. The, the metallic type of look. And yeah, I'm really surprised by how different the colors are. But I think, I mean, you can't go wrong with either one. Both of these figures are awesome, man. They're very, very impressive. So yeah, that's basically the differences in the two figures. And for accessories, both figures come with the same stuff, which is basically just a couple of guns. First off, we have this little pistol type of gun. And as you can see, these are both different and they match the figures that they come with. This one came with the carbonized version. This is from the first edition version. And they both look really cool. And they actually put some love into these things because these guns look a lot better than guns that we tend to see with Marvel Legends figures from Hasbro. And you can see that the gun part itself is like a shiny metallic metal color and the handle actually has like brown paint. And then on this one, you have like a gunmetal color with the gray on the handle so that's cool these things look good they don't look cheap and plastic and then for these guys here same kind of thing you know each gun matches the figure that it comes with the top one is the one that came with the carbonized version the bottom one here came with the first edition and these are cool this is a very interesting looking gun i'm curious to see what it does exactly and the one thing i don't like about these though is that these pegs just don't really work and I guess it's not the gun's fault. It's probably the figure. If the hole on the figure was deeper, these things could stick in there. But as it is, they, they barely go in there and then they fall off really easy when you're handling the figure. So that's something to keep in mind. But the guns are very cool. Look at that. Are those like, is that paint defects or like little rivets? It's hard to tell. But yeah, this is cool, you know. This is a really weird looking gun. Look at that. Some good stuff going on there. 
And for some size comparisons, we have the Mandalorian alongside the Mafex Boba Fett and the Black Series Boba Fett. And seeing both of these Black Series figures side to side really makes me wish that I held on to the Black Series Jango Fett. I think he would have looked really cool next to them. I know I bought him when he first came out, but I didn't like it very much, so I think I gave it away or something. But I think I'm going to have to track it back down because I think he would look cool along with these two figures. And now here we have him with the Mafex Darth Vader and the Black Series Darth Vader. Next up, we have the Mandalorian alongside the Black Series Han Solo and Black Series Sand Trooper. And then now here we have them alongside the SH Figure Arts Age of Ultron Captain America and the SH Figure Arts Ant-Man. And then last but not least, we have them alongside the Marvel Legends Bucky Cap and Marvel Legends Pizza Spider-Man. And for the articulation, we're going to go ahead and use the carbonized version because I feel like his joints are a little looser and they're moving around a little bit more freely than they are on the first edition version. And when it comes to the articulation, that's really where they surprised me because they snuck some things in here that I didn't know that they were doing on the Black Series figures. So it's very exciting, but let's get into it here. So his head is able to move side to side. He's got a little bit of tilt to it, but not much because it is a big old helmet. But they did some they did something new here or something I didn't realize that they were doing. And they have a neck very similar to like import figures where you have movement where the neck meets the torso and where the neck meets the head. Obviously, it's limited because of his helmet, but it's very cool that they have it in there. And I didn't know that they were doing stuff like that. That's so cool. And then for the torso, you're able to tilt to the sides. You have a you have a twist, but obviously it's hindered because you have like his straps and his cape flying around and this and that, but you could definitely twist a little bit. And I do like this diaphragm cut. I just wish it got a little bit more movement, but for the most part, it's pretty decent. You have a slight crunch. Yeah, not much of a crunch at all. You can go back an okay amount. But yeah, you know, as long as it moves a little bit, I'm okay with the torso situation because he does have armor on anyways, so it is what it is. And then another thing where they surprised me is that he has like butterfly jointed shoulders or butterfly shoulders. When did they start doing that on Black Series figures? I looked at a couple of old ones that I had hanging around and they definitely don't have that. So if you know, let me know when they started to do that on Black Series figures. I'm going to have to backtrack a little bit and pick up a couple more figures just out of curiosity because that's really cool look at that it doesn't get the best amount of movement because you know he does have this shoulder pad on but it's definitely there so that is awesome stuff and then he is able to bring his arm all the way around he doesn't have a ball jointed shoulder it's just a peg stuck into that shifting uh, butterfly shoulder piece but that's okay he doesn't have any upper bicep swivel he gets his swivel at his elbow and for the elbow he does have a single jointed elbow and you know that kind of sucks i wish they would change that on the star wars figures but you know it's it's decent it gets slightly more than 90 eh, not really i guess it's pretty much just 90 on these things but you know it's okay it's not too bad at all and then for the hands you have a swivel and a hinge and on the left side it's your traditional hand that goes like that and then on this side on the right side it's his you know shooter type of hand so that's dope and then for the legs, you could bring them out to the side. You could bring them forward only to about right there because then the pads kind of collide with each other. But it goes to right there. You can bring it back. I uh, can't really bring it back. It just kind of goes out like that. And then you have the upper thigh swivel. Double jointed knees, which are pretty good. No lower leg swivel, it looks like. No swivel at the foot, but you do have rocking ankles. And you could bring them forward right there, bring them up like that. So it's kind of limited in the legs. But yeah, I'm really impressed with the fact that they've changed the neck on these figures because that's really cool. And then the butterfly shoulders. It's always awesome, you know, finding things on figures that you don't know about. I was just messing with it and then like, I was like, oh, what? What's going on here? Oh, look at that. Butterfly shoulders. That's dope. And it doesn't even get that much movement, but it's just really cool that they did that. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with the articulation on these guys. Okay, so overall, I like both of these figures a lot, and I really like the character design of the Mandalorian, and I feel like both of these figures do a really good job of capturing it. There's a lot of good sculpt work going on here. Obviously, both figures share the same exact sculpt, so there's no difference there, but it's very well detailed. It looks really cool. There's a lot of good things going on on there, just a lot of little details that they were able to include with the pouches and like the extra ammunition on his belts and all those kind of things, and it just comes out to be like a really cool looking figure. As far as the accessories go, I do wish 
said he came with some more stuff. I feel like if he would have came with some fists and some open hands and then gun gripping hands, that would have been like the best. I, I think at that point, it would have been really hard for import companies to compete with this figure, especially when you consider the price, you know, because I feel like these are really good representations of this character. And when I mess with these figures, there's nothing on here where I feel like, oh, you know, Mafex would have done this better or Figure Arts would have done this better or whatever. When I'm messing with these, I'm pretty damn satisfied with, with what I'm handling here. I'm sure when those two companies eventually come out with their versions, they'll be great. And, you know, I'll probably buy those and be like, oh, yeah, I love these. And they destroyed the Black Series. But right now, while I'm handling these, I don't feel like there's anything missing or that they need anything more other than some additional accessories. But for the figures themselves, themselves they are really really cool and man i can't you know black series has really come a long way since i purchased one and as far as the articulation goes that's really where they've excelled because they threw some stuff in there that i really wasn't expecting so that's always cool when you're messing around with the figure and then there's an additional piece of articulation that you didn't know was there that is awesome and that's probably part of the reason why i'm so like hyped up about these figures because i, I had no idea there was <laughs> shoulder swivel and i was like you know completely caught by surprise so that's awesome stuff and as far as the paint job goes both figures are very well painted and I, I just like all the details on both of them they look incredible now as far as which one I think is better that's a tough one to be honest with you you really can't go wrong with either one they're both really cool looking figures it's just a matter of choice um, for me I'd probably go with the I'd probably go with the carbonized version I feel like that's gonna be the less popular opinion but I don't know that one's awesome soon as I opened it up I was just like really into it it's a very cool looking figure and you know obviously the other one is badass too but just something about the carbonized one that I like a lot and as far as the different versions of the character in my opinion i think that if you're into these figures and you want to buy them you should kind of make it a priority to get the carbonized version i feel like in the long run the first edition version inside the box is going to be the hardest thing to obtain out of the three that were released on force friday followed by the carbonized version whether in the box or loose or whatever but i feel like yeah it, when it's all said and done i mean there's going to be a, the least amount of the first edition version in the box floating around as far as loose i think when it comes to getting the loose figures it's going to be much harder to get the carbonized version because you're going to have two ways to get the one that's in the first edition box so you know it is what it is but anyways thank you so much for watching i really hope this video was helpful if you're trying to decide which one of these two you should get and if maybe you didn't even know that they were different so hopefully this uh gave you some information that you didn't have before but anyways thank you so much for watching please be sure to like comment subscribe and all that good stuff if you enjoyed the video please be sure to leave a thumbs up that's it thank you very much peace